Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. Today we are going to see how we can implement regularization for deep learning models in PyTorch from scratch. During this process, you are going to see how we can define custom loss functions when training deep learning models and use torch.autograd or PyTorch automatic differentiation to solve optimization problems. If you find this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so let's get started. In supervised learning, whether you are solving a regression or classification problem, the goal is to learn a function or decision rule, which we show here by f of theta x, given a set of n training data points. Here I use subscript theta to show all the parameters that this function has. And these are the parameters that we want to learn. And the way that we learn these parameters is to form a loss function or also known as cost function, given these n training data points, which typically takes the form of the average error for all data points. So that's why here we have one over n summation over i equals one to n. And then inside the summation, we have a loss function L, which measures the difference between actual and predicted values. So these YIs are the you know, true responses or actual responses. And uh, what this F of theta gives us is predicted value. In the case of regression, for example, you can see that this loss function is simply uh, subtracting uh, predicted and actual values and take this difference to the power of two. And this is not the only way to define a loss function, which is really important to learn how to define your own uh, custom loss functions in PyTorch or other data science and deep learning frameworks. The idea behind machine learning is that we want to learn um, these parameters theta given some training data points, but at the end, we want to make sure that this model performs very well on unseen uh, or new data points. And this is something that is very important because we want to have the performance of machine learning model to be comparable on training and test data points. And this takes us to this idea of overfitting, which means that sometimes the model performs very well on training data, but it does not on the test data. And that's undesirable. And one way to uh, fix this problem is using regularization and specifically weight decay regularization, where the idea is that we add a penalty term to this optimization problem that we had before, uh, and now it will take this form that we have the, uh, the average uh, prediction error plus alpha, where alpha is usually a constant that you have to choose, and we call this regularization parameter, and then another function of parameter theta. For example, something known as L2 norm regularization is simply taking the uh, Euclidean norm or the L2 norm of theta, which means that we are going to square all the parameters and um, add them together. So why is this helpful? The reason is that now we want to trade off uh, between um, the quality of model and the training data and some measure of complexity. In other uh, sort of like words, uh, what we want to do here is that we want to make sure that if we have to increase the value of um, some of these parameters that we have here, theta 0 to theta d, uh, we have to do that if it's really, really necessary. Otherwise, we are going to prefer to have simpler um, functions. And here, simpler basically means that these parameters that we have in our model um, are smaller. And obviously, there is a trade-off here. When alpha equals zero, we don't have any regularization. When alpha is extremely large, this forces the model to just give us a set of uh, parameters that are very close to um, zero. So in this sense, uh, we want to make sure that this regularization parameter alpha uh, is uh, chosen wisely. So now that we um, uh, understand how regularization and, and in particular weight decay regularization uh, changes the optimization problem and the loss function that we have here, the other part is uh, related to solving this optimization problem. And 
arguably the most popular method in um, solving problems uh, for deep learning models is to use gradient descent, which requires the computation of gradient. So what is gradient? Gradient is generalization of derivatives to uh, functions of several variables. So if here we have only one parameter theta, if it's just a uh, single variable, then uh, you know we can just find derivative. But in general, for example, when you have deep learning models, you may have thousands and millions of parameters. So then you have to find uh, partial derivatives for each of them, and then we put them in an array, which we call this gradient. I have multiple other uh, videos that I discuss gradient and how to find them, uh, and also how exactly PyTorch finds gradient, but this is beyond the scope of this video. And the idea is that when you have the gradient, we can use something called gradient descent or its um, variance, but the idea is that we want to always go to the uh, negative direction of um, gradient, right? So if we are at solution theta and we want to find a better solution, we are gonna subtract um, some, again, constant. Here I show by eta, which is the learning rate, times the gradient of the loss function. And you can see here in this uh, very simple uh, example on the right side, if we are at the red point, uh, the derivative is positive, and if you want to find the minimum value for this function, we have to go towards left, which is the negative times the direction of derivative. Um, and the same thing um, is valid when you are uh, on the left side, on the green point theta c. In that case, if you want to find a better solution, we have to go towards right, which is the negative 1 times the uh, that negative slope of uh, the derivative or the tangent line uh, for the point theta c. So the idea is that to, to, to summarize this is that we have a loss function and um, now we have to find the gradient and after that we can use this uh, iterative process to find the solution. So how does this work in practice? That's the main uh, purpose of this video. So let's create a synthetic data set we are gonna use NumPy, PyTorch, and then from Torch, we are gonna import also neural networks. That's what you usually do when you want to work with neural networks. Also, Torch has, uh, in utilities, has something called data, which uh, we will very uh, soon see how that helps us to create a data iterator so that we can work with different batches of data points. And we also import Matplotlib for visualization and plotting uh, graphs. In order to create a synthetic data here, meaning a simulated data, uh, what we do is that we write this function that accepts two uh, main parameters, w and b, and then after that, we use a linear model to generate the data. So the way it works is that we uh, use normal distribution with mean zero and variance one of size number of examples by the length of w. We multiply this by the vector w, which is uh, the parameter that we want to uh, estimate later on. And then we also add the bias term uh, b. And the reason that here we just add a single number b here is because Python um, does broadcasting, meaning that uh, it will add b to all the uh, examples or training data points that we have here. And finally, we add a little bit of noise. So that's the torch.normal with mean 0 and um, variance 0 0.01. And at the end, we return these x and y values. So this is the way that we generate both our training data and test data. And theta, in fact, here is the vector w, and that's bus term b. But we use the compact notation to uh, uh, represent both of them. So given this function that we have defined here, now we're going to actually create training and test data. Because here we want to focus on regularization, I, I uh, generate a case that we only have 20 training data points and we have 100 test data points. So one is used for training, the other one is used for evaluation. And here, uh, in terms of the number of inputs uh, or the, the dimension of the original data, or in other words, the length of W, we use 200 and we are working with batch size of 5. Uh, we don't have to do this here because we have a relatively a small data set, but I want to show you how this works in general case. 
and then we create our true W and true B. So this is like the, uh, uh, the sort of like the baseline or actual values for these two parameters. And then we create the training data using the synthetic data that we defined in the previous slide. Uh, and we pass these true values for these two parameters and the number of training data points. Similarly, we do this for the number of test data points. And you can see here that the in terms of the size of these um, uh, tensors or um, arrays, uh, they match with what we think. So we have 20 data points. Um, they are 200 dimensional. And then we have 20 uh, outputs, uh, one for each uh, input example that we have. And then the idea was about generating mini batches because that's what usually we do with deep learning because we cannot load the entire data. And for that, you can use data loader, which is part of that, uh, uh, the Torch utilities that we imported. And what, it is does, what this does for us is basically giving us an iterator, which we can iterate through all batches of data. So here we have 20 training examples and we have batch size of five. So it means that every time when we have a for loop, we're going through one of these uh, batches or also known as mini batches. So therefore this is what we get from here, train iter and test iter. We need to define a few other functions to simplify the process of training this um, you know, simple deep learning model that we have here. Uh, so the first thing is to initialize these uh, parameters that we have, or these weights, um, W and B. So we use, again, normal distribution. That's a uh, uh, sort of like a common practice to use normal distribution for initialization. Something that you have to make sure that uh, we have is that we want to set this um, argument requires grad to be true. This allows us to find the gradient with respect to these parameters. This is what we need to uh, be able to use you know, gradient descent that we had before. And then we have to define our model, which I call it here forward, which means that this is the forward model, meaning that if you give an uh, sort of like a set of inputs X, and now we want to find the output, this is just simply multiplication of X and W, and then we add this parameter B. And then we also have to define the the basic loss function which we have here, which is the squared loss. Uh, this is, if you remember, the first part that we had in the previous loss function, uh, which simply is deduct um, um, or subtract actual and predicted values uh, and take it to the power of two. And then um, this way later on, we can add all of them together. We also need two more functions for training and evaluation. The first one is implementing stochastic gradient descent, uh, where you have some parameters, you have some learning rate, right? So remember, this is that ADA that we have there. Uh, and also the sort of like the batch size here. Um, and then we use with torch.nograd. The reason we use this torch.nograd is because we don't want uh, PyTorch to put into uh, consideration, uh, the computation that we do uh, inside this function. This is just basically to update the parameters. Doesn't mean that, um, you know, this parameter should be included in the computation graph where uh, shows us how these different parameters are connected. Um, and you can see here when we have some parameters, we're going to subtract uh, learning rate times this pram.grad. So that's the power of PyTorch where um, we don't have to compute these gradients ourselves and we can automatically uh, find them uh, in the name of parameter.grad. So this is where uh, PyTorch um, automatic differentiation becomes very uh, useful. And something that you have to keep in mind is that PyTorch accumulates gradients. So it is important that after you use the information that you want um, this is stored in the gradient to set that equal to zero. So that next time when we are updating these parameters, we are not taking into consideration the previous uh, gradients that we have uh, found. And then for the evaluation of the model that we have, we simply uh, for any data, whether training data or test data, we just pass this through the uh, uh, the model that we have. That's why here I call it like net, stands for network. Uh, this is our forward model. We find an output 
and then simply we use the loss function to see uh, the so like the difference between actual and predicted values and report the uh, or return the error at the end. So now we have all the pieces that we need to do uh, model fitting and also evaluation. And the goal here is to show you the difference between regularization uh, and not using regularization. So let's start first with the case that we don't use regularization. And you can see that here, that's the part that um, our loss function, which we show here by L, is just the squared loss, right? So meaning that we are going to subtract actual and predicted values, take it to the power of two, and then take the um, average or sum. And you can see that this dot backward, that's when uh, PyTorch automatically computes gradients for us. And after that, that's where we use our stochastic gradient descent or SGD updates. And then um, after performing uh, these iterations for each epoch, we are going to look at the, um, the error for training data and test data. And I have the entire code for you also how you can plot this. And you can see that here we get this situation that the training error, meaning the error on the training data is uh, constantly decreasing, but the error on test data is flat. And that's really, really bad because of this gap that we have between train and test data. Um, and you can see that as the performance gets better on the training data, it uh, stays the same um, for the test data. So that's why here we notice that we really need to use regularization. So now let's fix this problem by adjusting this loss function using weight decay. So now you can see that here we are going to add a term which here I call like alpha. This is the um, constant we use for regularization or regularization parameter. And then I'm going to add a new penalty term for L2 norm. And that's exactly that um, the uh, sort of like taking each uh, element of W to the power of two, adding them together and then dividing by two. So this is a common practice that whenever you are working with uh, quadratic terms, you use a constant one over two because one over two, because this helps you to, uh, you know, cancel uh, the two that you get from taking the derivative. But here, because you are not solving this by hand, it doesn't really matter because this is automatically um, done when you're using dot backward. And you can see that just by adding this extra term, alpha times L2 penalty here, that now we have reduced the gap between training and uh, testing um, error. So you can see that as we get better uh, training, uh, sort of like um, uh, performance, the performance of mod, uh, machine learning model or deep learning model that we have here also gets better on testing data. So you can see that regularization is actually very, very uh, useful tool, especially when you're working with uh, small data sets, meaning that when it's very hard to collect uh, sufficient amounts of training data. And what's actually more interesting here is that you can even customize this loss function more. So if you are a data scientist or machine learning uh, scientist and you want to see whether you can even do better by regularizing your problem more, you can see that now here I also call something which is this L1 penalty, which is the sum of the absolute values of elements of W uh, and other than that, everything is the same. You can see that still we can use dot backward. You can use the SGD function that we defined before. Uh, and, and that's exactly why we had these separate functions to make this more uh, modular. And you can see that now even um, we have uh, further decreased the gap between training and testing error. So you can use uh, you know, different strategies to regularize models and you are not restricted to just use what has been already uh, implemented in PyTorch. If you find this video helpful, please again, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time.